So how's your book going this week? Um, this week I'm doing the Pow Pow Fish, and so far the kids love it. It's really entertaining, and doing all sorts of different voices with the characters in the story. So okay. very excited, a lot of high interest. Great words in here. A lot of the words um, have been revisited from other books that we did, like um, Slender, Squelchy, Pout, Mope, Scowl, all of those. So this week's words mm -hmm. are gloomy, impolite, astounded, sulking, destiny, and dreary. And I have to make some choices about which ones I'm going to mm -hmm. get rid of because I only have five pictures. So what, what word do you think doesn't really fit or they're not really understanding? It was very hard to find a picture of destiny. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with dreary because mm -hmm. I have a picture of the Scottish moors all dark and mm -hmm. forbidding uh -huh. looking. So I think I'm going to go with yeah. that one. Uh, and then we'll just talk about destiny, maybe putting it in context in you know, another sentence. I like the prefix um, in for impolite because this week we started looking at some un words. So I think that will tie in nicely um, to the work that we're doing this week. Great. So when I choose that word for next week. So this week we're finishing up Sergio Makes a Splash. Again, they're really, really into uh, the book. I love all the speech bubbles also that go along with it. Um, you know, they're really engaged as we're reading. And so the words that we chose were curious, shaky, excited, vast, and relaxed. And with shaky, um, we brought back the word wobble or wobbly from when we did Grumpy Gloria. And then excited, uh, we said that it was maybe a penny word but we brought back some of the old words that we were studying, like the word eager. Um, oh, so that's great, they could go back. Yeah, from uh, Badger's Fancy Meal. What kind of writing activity were you thinking about doing with this this week? Um, so one of the things that we're gonna do, Sergio is really brave in the story because he doesn't want to you know, make the, uh, go in the water, but he ends, in the end, he goes in the water. So we were thinking about a time that we were brave, just like the characters brave, and also, one of my favorite parts was the expression, as far as the eye can see. So maybe, um, you know, having them go to different places in their home or uh, in the school and just looking as far as the eye can see and just like jotting down words what they can see. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, and then acting out was perky, shaky, relaxed, uh, happy, pops out, scared, uh, waddle, and when they hop to the edge. That's what I noticed this yeah. week also with um, the book that I'm doing. They were very familiar with some of the older words, so immediately right. you don't even have to say it. They were already mm -hmm. doing the pout face and acting mm -hmm. it out, kind of knowing where they were going in. And if you remember um, from the other book that we did, we had squelchy, yeah. the squishy stuff. So yeah, I love that word. Right. So, and then they were and thinking... scowl uh, also. Scowl, yes. Um, but the words they were acting out this week was gloomy and making lovely rude faces for <laughs> impolite. Um, acting surprised for astounded and um, sulking around the room like they were moody or pouting or okay. in trouble. Nice. We'll be excited to use that one right. for next week. Um, do you want so for next week we'll switch books but for after that what are you thinking? Um, last night I was looking at Rumble in the Jungle okay, I have that. and it's the same author that did um, that wrote Giraffes Can't Dance, which was a right. big hit. Um, I loved, let me see, what did I write down about it? Um, I love the sense of rhythm and rhyme in the story. Mm -hmm. I think the children will be very engaged and jump right into it. The pictures are fantastic. Um, there's not a lot of text on a couple of pages. It might be half a page of text, but the rest of it is the rhythm and flow of a rhyme mm -hmm. going through about all different animals. What struck me most about the book was the rich, rich language. So many words. Yeah. Um, some old friends, but some new ones. Munching, quivers, shudders, shivers, wander, which I know I didn't do. Mm -hmm. Squashes, I love this Gang. word. Gangly. Definitely. That has Resist, to be gorgeous, prowl, ravenous. So we're going to okay. have to do some, okay. some editing on those. Right. Uh, and then I thought a really nice engagement activity might be that the book is broken up into little verses about each animal. Mm -hmm. So I thought the kids might try an animal focusing on one aspect of how the animal eats or how the animal yeah. moves and try to model for them how that might work. Yeah. And then let's see what they do with an animal of their choice. Sounds good. 
Um, I was thinking also, because we have so many words from this book, that letting you know the students really choose the words that they want to learn more about. Okay, that'd be great. So you know, we could just like introduce to them. I know you do that a lot. Words I really that we found. Try that. Yeah, I usually uh, just powerful, pick them. Yes. but then giving them you know the freedom to choose what words. So this book I thought was interesting. I just want to know your opinion. Uh, you can do it, Sam. And as soon as I started reading through it, I went to my book basket and I found this one. It's the same characters. Um, and I used this book a lot in the beginning of the year to do small moments and introduce a style of writing. So I thought that would be you know, interesting uh, to see the characters, uh, the same characters. But as I was going through it, I definitely pulled um, some words, like swirling, stirred, it peaked in, in the oven. So this can be a, word, uh, a book that we use also, yeah. if you want to look through it. Bear yeah. sniffed the air, it's one of the words from the beginning of the year. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of text on each page, but it does, it doesn't... Um, it's big text, you It's know? big text and it might move pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of places no to turn and talk. Tumbled. Yeah, those expressions. Mm -hmm. I think um, powdered it the yard powdered is the yard pretty language. Is beautiful. The snow powdered the yard. Yeah, I think it has value, definitely. Okay. So this could definitely be a book. Yeah, so tag that, and we'll look through okay. that again, and we'll find some vocabulary for that. Um, should we talk about this one a little bit? Uh, you yes. Think? Um, when I did when I read it last night, I love the story. I love the idea behind it that it's from the P's perspective. Yeah. Love it. Uh, the only thing I was afraid of it has a lot of text in it. Too much. Great words, but a lot of text. Mm -hmm. Um, so this might just be like a one-time read, maybe not to do it every day. I thought it'd be great for second grade okay. because they have a little bit longer attention span and they mm -hmm. might be able to sit. I, I know, it'll, it'll be really good for yeah. second grade. I would Nestle definitely Zuzan's. try it in first yeah. grade, but I am a little, that would be my one thing, I'm a little leery of the text. But the words um, are great, nestled, snuggly, tingle, uh, nagging, demand, furious. Sure. Yeah, Lashed. really, really good, good, language. good, good language. So maybe our plan will be like we'll do a one-time read, and then this can be a book that second grade does in the beginning of the year because they'll right. hear it at the end of first grade. Right. So it'll be a familiar book to them to start second grade with. That's a good idea. And they do the whole fairy tales right. in in their writing unit, so that would be great to tie in for, for that for okay. them. So we'll tell second grade about this. So not a book for first grade, but. No, but maybe really, like a really read. nice writing activities could go with that because then, and I think again that goes more for second grade, right? Because then they could do fairy tales from a different perspective of somebody else in the story. Okay, and that would be a nice model piece for them. Okay, sounds good. Do you think like any books that we've done this year that maybe like we should revisit? That some of the words maybe didn't stick, they're not using them as much? Well, I think towards the end of the year now, we want to leave them with creating lots of really good memories around books so that the words do stick. So I was really focusing on going back towards the last couple of weeks and revisiting the great books, the books the that, they books that they love. pick up over and over again. Okay. The ones that they go back to the blue basket yeah. for every single day after reading. Right. So let's pick some of those. Should we look at... Okay. Well, I'm going to just pull out the books. Giraffes, Giraffes Can't, Can't Dance, Dance was... Amazing, Love. they loved it. Um, I only have one of these I have because that I one oh, do you also. have the other one? Because I borrowed it from a student. Bear snores on and bear wants more. Do you have uh, bear wants we more? We did bear, yeah, bear feels sick. Oh, I didn't even know that one. <laughs> That's going in my basket. <laughs> Thank you. And you said you had nothing to give me today. I will give you a sheet today. Um, no, that's great because they love these stories. And again, because okay. they had great sense of rhythm in the language, there were so many things for the kids to act out. Okay. Um, Mr. McGregor, um, do you remember which story that was in? But they loved that when they dressed up like far, like a farmer, and they really acted the whole story out. I'm trying to think. Oh, and Badger. Badger's fancy me all we need to do hit. that again. Absolutely. They loved this. Mm -hmm. And this was great okay. for using um, simile, where they yes. went back and yeah. did all those activities mm -hmm. as smelly as sucks. And I find them still doing right. that. They love that sense of um, being able to, to write like that. And they used it a lot in their poetry also. Right. 
and the book I'm doing this week has a lot of alliteration in it, and they love that, even though you don't really have to talk about alliteration, but just the sounds of the words on your tongue, right. and when all the letters start with the same, all the words start with the same letter, they love it if you make a big deal about it and say, oh my God. Um, do you want to look at the writing for a minute and just see sure. what kind of words they're using? Angelina used the word smashed. I smashed into the wall. And she also used the word hollered when she was hollering for her dad. Now, did you notice her going immediately to the cards or was she just using it from what she remembered? Um, for, actually, for the word hollered, it was very interesting because she wrote and maybe she wrote, and I screamed, or, and I said, and then when she was working with her writing partner, like, sure. the writing partner said, why don't you go back and, you know, see if there's a, um, a different word that you can use, and then she went back, and she looked, actually, I think, um, at the paint chips, and she found the word holler there, so that's, like, how she decided to go back and change it, and... So just reading her writing, I'm wondering now that we learned the word vast this week, if, she, if she's going to go back and change the word uh, big to the to word vast. So that's something I'm going to look for to in her writing. To see if she'll do that independently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find a lot of them are now going back and looking at the paint chips and, and trying to substitute those words because you make a big deal out of it right. and they all want to be recognized for that. Right. Um, some of the words that the children were using um, in their... Um, on-demand writing this week were shocked and thrilled. Um, I noticed them using dialogue also mm -hmm. and attempting to do the quotation marks, which is really nice. And I think that's just the repetition of hearing the stories right. and chiming in with the choral reading yeah. and really understanding when voices change. And then making sure the print is really big also so they can see the right. quotation marks and everything like that. Right. And I think just being exposed to the language because I know we don't, I went back and looked on the paint chips. We don't have splendid, but we had a couple of other words, and sometimes words don't make the paint chips because right. we only do three. But it um, must have been one that Rachel didn't get on a paint chip, but she decided to use it on her writing. So she used, used splendid. splendid. Yes, it was a splendid day they were oh talking about. It was a splendid day. <laughs> they were talking about going on the field trip. Um, and expressions like Henry. Uh, the sun was burning, which I don't think is something a first grader would necessarily right. come up with unless they were really exposed to language and really mm -hmm. becoming word watchers right. and thinking about how language sounds. Mm -hmm. um, one of my students used the sound word gulp at the end of it, and we've you know done a lot of word work with um, sound words. That word play is very important. Yeah. Um. It's in here somewhere, but yeah, I thought that was really cute. Um, and then, you know, using speech bubbles, I bellowed, I want a turtle. Oh, bellowed, so that's this, great. Right, but this would be somewhere, um, you know, to teach the quotation marks, but then he used it here. I think that is the influence of the read aloud, that the children want their writing to sound more grown up, that they're exposed to it, and they really want their writing to sound like writing that's in books. Right. And then they get to hear the books, you know, uh, few times that week, so they keep being reminded of that beautiful language. And right. On that note, I'm just thinking when you said that, Muhammad, who didn't use any words, but I pulled his because when he first came, he had no English but about one sentence. And even though he doesn't have any of the chip words, yeah. just the sound and the idea oh of gosh. how language sounds is amazing, I wrote it down. Like the sense of story and the dialogue and action. Mrs. Wolfring said, get on your mark, get set. And the green team was running fast and the white team and the blue team was, was sitting down. Like that sense of urgency when he's mm -hmm. writing. And we run and run and the green team was starting, oh, I'm sorry, and the green team was starting, go green team, go green team and he's trying to yeah. use quotation marks. So really, even though he wasn't using the chips, you can see an influence in understanding the, the sense of story. Yeah. And it makes sense. And it makes <laughs> sense. And it makes sense. <laughs> I think that we can you know, just be on the lookout for the, the students that aren't using these words yet and maybe like thinking of ways that we can reach them and maybe um, you know, instead of having like all of these words in front of them, just maybe choosing three or four words that they can use in their writing. Do you think like we could do that in the process of going back and looking over your work for them? Mm -hmm. Being that they already have their thoughts down, they have something in front of them to work on, and then 
kind of say, here are some words, where do you think they might fit right. in, in the right. writing? Yeah, definitely. It might not be like the same words for each student, but maybe just seeing if they can like go back and put it into right. their writing. All right, so that'll be some of our next steps for okay. the writing.